The recent pullout by the German company from the 43,000 crore rupees project 75i will create a single vendor situation with South Korea's Duwoo ship building as the only competitor in the program. Korea has officially offered the DSME 3000 design, and Korean officials have already said that the variant offered to the Indian Navy will be without the vertical launching system. The P-75I request for proposal is likely to be scrapped due to a single vendor situation, and experts have said that India should pursue the construction of Super Calvary class design with France, and selecting the same Project 75 design for the Project 75I will lead to better logistics, easier weapon integration for both P-75 and P-75I, and the Navy can readily transfer trained crew from the Calvary class to the Super Calvary class submarine. The Super Calvary for Project 75i would also take less time to build, given the available manpower expertise and infrastructure at Mazagin Dock Limited. Larsen and Tubro can also start a parallel line for P75i production, and both the production lines can be utilized later to the fullest extent in the indigenous construction of 12 submarines on the Project 76. The DRDO is working on a laser weapon test bed that will be based on a 5-ton 4x4 vehicle. All laser subsystems will be integrated into the vehicle, and the components include high-power laser, electro-optical tracking system, thermal management unit, air conditioning and ducting. The DRDO had sought $100 million from the Ministry of Defense in March 2021 to develop the Duaga 2 high-power laser weapon, under which the Indian Army will receive a 100-kilowatt directed energy system that would enable it to target missiles and drones, and it will later be integrated with sea and air-based platforms. The chairman of Hindustan Aeronautics had recently confirmed that the Tejas Mark 1A will conduct its first flight by March 2022, and according to media reports, it won't be a newly built Tejas Mark 1A fighter jet, but instead a FOC standard Tejas Mark 1 aircraft that will be used as a flying test bed for the Mark 1A program, that will be equipped with the Israeli LM-2052 ACE radar and the ELL-8222 WB self-protection jammer mounted on an external pod, and it will also test some of the new weapons. The Indian Air Force will be getting two units of Tejas Mark 1A fighters by March 2024 to eight more units by March 2025, and the rest 63 units will be delivered by 2029, after which the production line will be used for the Tejas Mark II program. The government had acknowledged that nearly 2,032 crore rupees had been spent on the Cavalry engine development program in the last 30 years, but India has not been able to get a workable engine for its locally developed fighter jets even in 2021, due to which HAL had to place 5,375 crore rupees order for the procurement of 99 F-404 engines from the US firm GE Aviation for the Tejas Mark 1A program. The Tejas Mark II AMCA Unted BF will also be powered by GE supplied engines, that will see potential orders estimated to be over 12,000 crore rupees in the next decade, and several more crores of foreign exchange will be needed in the procurement of spares and supplies in maintaining them for the next three decades. The RDO and Rolls-Royce are in talks for the development of a new jet engine, and it will take at least seven years for development, and five more years for flight trials and certification, that will be followed by production. India can't create an ecosystem for domestically produced engines unless it invests in local jet engine programs, and there is a need to invest in public-private sector companies that can work on smaller jet engine programs, and then graduate to develop bigger engines meant for fighter jets and transport aircraft. Oh,